Day 20, Chapter 5, Page 69 Prepare for Future Trials The servants of Christ are to prepare no set speech to present when brought to trial for their faith. Their preparation is to be made day by day in treasuring up in their hearts the precious truths of God's word, in feeding upon the teaching of Christ and through prayer strengthening their faith. Then, when brought into trial, the Holy Spirit will bring to their remembrance the very truths that will reach the hearts of those who shall come to hear. God will flash the knowledge obtained by diligent searching of the scriptures into their memory at the very time when it is needed. When the time of trial shall come, there are men now preaching to others who will find, upon examining the positions they hold, that there are many things for which they can give no satisfactory reason. Until thus tested, they knew not their great ignorance. And there are many in the church who take it for granted that they understand what they believe. But until controversy arises, they do not know their own weakness. When separated from those of like faith and compelled to stand singly and alone to explain their belief, they will be surprised to see how confused are their ideas of what they had accepted as truth. Control the moral powers. The ability to give a reason for our faith is a good accomplishment. But if the truth does not go deeper than this, the soul will never be saved. The heart must be purified from all moral defilement. Few realize that it is a duty to exercise control over their thoughts and imaginations. It is difficult to keep the undisciplined mind fixed upon profitable subjects. But if the thoughts are not properly employed, religion cannot flourish in the soul. The mind must be preoccupied with sacred and eternal things, or it will cherish, cherish trifling and superficial thoughts. Both the intellectual and the moral powers must be disciplined, and they will strengthen and improve by exercise. We greatly need to encourage and cultivate pure, chaste thoughts to strengthen the moral powers rather than lower and carnal powers. God helps us to awake from our self-indulgent appetites. The example of Enoch. Enoch walked with God 300 years previous to his translation to heaven and the state of the world was not then more favorable for the perfection of Christian character than it is today. And how did Enoch walk with God? He educated his mind and heart to ever feel that he was in the presence of God. And when in perplexity, his prayers would ascend to God to keep him. He refused to take any course that would offend his God. He kept the Lord continually before him. He would pray, teach me thy way that I may not err. What is thy pleasure concerning me? What shall I do to honour thee, my God? Thus he was constantly shaping his way and course in accordance with God's commandments, and he had perfect confidence and trust in his heavenly Father that he would help him. He had no thought or will of his own. It was all submerged in the will of his Father. Now Enoch was a representative of those who will be upon the earth when Christ shall come who will be translated to heaven without seeing death. Enoch had temptations as well as we. He was surrounded with society, no more friendly to righteousness than what surrounds us today. The atmosphere he breathed was tainted with sin and corruption, the same as ours. Yet he lived a life of holiness. He was unsullied with the prevailing sins of the age in which he lived. So may we remain pure and uncorrupted.